All right, so if you can't solve this simple math problem without using a calculator, well, you may want to consider brushing up on your basic math skills, but uh, let's take a look at this problem. So we have a bracket, and then we have parentheses, 7 minus 9 parentheses, and then we have parentheses, 3 minus 5 parentheses, and then another bracket divided by parentheses, 8 minus 9 parentheses. All right, so we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 2, B is negative 4, C is 8, and D is negative 10. Once again, we're not going to be using our calculator, but uh, feel free to use that supercomputer uh, that we all have. It's located right here in between your ears. That's far better than any artificial intelligence. As a matter of fact, that's actual intelligence. But if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step how we can solve this problem without using a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is our problem. And you're going to have to be very careful here because we have a lot of parentheses and brackets. And uh, as long as you understand, you know, basic math, and we're talking about things, uh, uh, math topics that are generally taught uh, at middle school level and beyond, right? So if you've taken at least middle school level math, you should be able to answer this uh, question correctly. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer here. The correct answer is B, which is negative 4. All right, now, if you were able to do this problem without a calculator, you'd definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. Congratulations on remembering your basic math skills. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, um, you know, I knew how to do this problem, or uh, yeah, I know how to do this problem, but it's been like, you know, since 1973 uh, since I've done any math. Well, don't, uh, you know, be discouraged because math is kind of like riding a bike, right? If you've been away from uh, it for <laughs> some time, you're going to forget, you know, your math skills. So that's why I'm stressing, put away your calculator. And this is a terrible looking bike. Anyways, let's move on to the solution. But uh, here is our problem. Now, those of you out there that still have to take math exams, and you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's me. I'm still in school. Well, let's just kind of look at something here. We do have a multiple choice question, so never, ever leave a question, a math question blank, right? There's very few exceptions, maybe on tests like the SAT or ACT. You may uh, consider leaving a blank question because you do get penalized for the wrong answer, but just take a guess here. You know, say, I don't know, A looks pretty good to me. So at least you got a one out of four chance. But obviously, in order to do this problem correctly, it's just best to know the math. And if we didn't have a multiple choice question, well, we're just simply going to have to do the calculations here. All right, so what do we have? Well, we have a bunch of parentheses and brackets. And the uh, operations don't seem too difficult, but we have to be very careful here. We have 7 minus 9, 3 minus 5, and 8 minus 9. And hopefully you picked up on that we're going to have to deal with positive and negative numbers. So if you forget how to work with positive and negative numbers, you're going to be confused here. But I'm going to give you a quick, quick uh, crash course on how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers. And then we're going to talk about some other aspects of this problem. So let's just take this right here, 7 minus 9. What is the answer to 7 minus 9? Now, if you say it's 2, well, unfortunately, that is wrong, all right? So it's actually negative 2. Now, why is that? Well, let's go ahead and review this right now. All right, so when we're subtracting numbers, okay, like right here, 7 minus 9, we can actually turn this subtraction uh, operator right here into something called plus negative. Matter of fact, I wanted to change colors. All right, so right here we have 7 minus 9. We could think of this problem as the same thing as 7 plus a negative 9. All right, 7 plus a negative 9. So when you have subtraction, you could turn this into a plus negative, okay? So the way this works, again, is we're going to turn this subtraction into an addition, and then we're going to put that negative sign uh, with the 9, all right? So 7 minus 9, for those of you that don't see that this is the same thing as 7 plus negative 9, well, now you see that this is the case. All right, so 7 plus negative 9, 
What is the answer? Well, as I indicated, it's negative two. But the best way to remember uh, dealing with positive and negative numbers, well, in my humble opinion, and I've been teaching this stuff for decades, let's take a look at this right here, seven plus negative nine, is to think about money. All right, everyone's favorite topic. Now, uh, a positive number is we have money, so we're really happy about that. And a negative number is when we owe money, so we're not really excited about that right there. So here's the situation. We have $7, right? We're very happy, but our friend comes up to us and says, hey, give me back that $9 that uh, I loaned you last week. So, you know, you might be saying, all right, well, I'll give you my $7 back, but I still owe you $2, right? So your financial situation here, uh, if you have $7, but you owe $9, is you still owe $2, right? <clears throat> so seven plus negative nine is gonna be negative two. Now let's take this a, a step further. What if I had negative three plus negative two? So what does this mean? Well, this is not a good financial situation. This is $3 of debt and another $2 of debt. So if you owe $3 and then you owe someone else another $2, well, you owe a total of $5. So negative three plus negative two is negative five. Okay, so one more quick example. What if we have this? We have 10 plus uh, negative six. Well, here we have $10 and we have more money than we owe. We owe someone maybe $6, but we have $10, so we could pay back the $6 and we still have $4. So 10 plus negative six uh, is equal to a positive four. Okay, so hopefully this is gonna help you out uh, with these uh, parts of the problems, but we have some other stuff going on here. Uh, so we're talking about parentheses, we have brackets, we have multiplication. This right here is actually multiplication. We have division, we have subtraction, and we have brackets and parentheses. So we're going to have to review something called the order of operations uh, because we have a lot going on here. And if we don't do this problem in the right order, we're going to get this wrong. So we need to be very familiar with this phrase, and this is called PEMDAS. Now this is a checklist that goes from left to right, and these letters stand for something. This is an acronym. But I'm going to give you a little mnemonic here, which that's just a kind of little uh, friendly phrase to help you remember uh, this uh, PEMDAS. And that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but I thank her for her contribution to mathematics. So let's go ahead and talk about what PEMDAS stands for. All right, so P stands for parentheses. So if you have parentheses in your math problem, and obviously we have a lot of parentheses here, we're gonna have to focus in on that first, okay? Now sometimes you have parentheses inside of brackets, inside of other squiggly brackets, and this P is uh, parentheses, but really technically it's grouping symbols. So it means these type of square brackets or these type of squiggly brackets. And if you have brackets within brackets or uh, parentheses inside of brackets or inside of other parentheses, you're always gonna work from the innermost parentheses, get that done, and then just kind of work your way um, out from there. All right, so that's what P stands for. Now let's talk about what E stands for. So E stands for exponents, but you can think of this as powers. So if I have like two to the third power, this little three up here is called the exponent. This two is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So E stands for exponents. Now some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, why don't they just call this uh, P for powers? Well, that would be confusing, right? Because we, we might think that we have to start with powers and then parentheses. So that's why they label it as E. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the next step. And the next step, uh, logically, it may seem like it's going to be M, right? Because we're doing this in order from left to right. But before I tell you the next step, let, let me go ahead and tell you what these letters stand for. So this is multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now, this next thing I'm going to tell you is one of the most confused things in basic math. So you want to pay attention. And it seems like we're going to do multiplication, right? So everyone's like, yeah, yeah, Mr. YouTube Math Man, because we're uh, moving from left to right. That's what you told me. Well, that's not the way this works. And that's where people get really confused about uh, math. The way this works is the following. Okay, we're going to do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. This is one of the most common mistakes in basic math. So let's uh, take a look at this situation right here. So if I have 10 divided by five times two, what is the answer? Okay, 10 divided 
five, five times two. Be careful here because a lot of you are going to get this wrong. So some of you might be saying, all right, I got this. This is going to be a 10 divided by five times two is 10. If you answered one, well, you're not paying attention to what I'm telling you, right? So what do we see first from left to right? We see division, okay? So we have to do division first. 10 divided by five is what? That is going to be two. So now two times two is four, right? So this is the correct answer. You've got to be very careful with this step. Again, probably the number one uh, common error in basic math that I've seen through the decades. All right, and that's why I kind of like to review the order of operations in my videos because a lot of people are like, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to tell you the phrase. It just came to mind. I knew that, and hopefully I spelled this right because I am a terrible speller. But uh, I've heard this phrase probably uh, well over a million times uh, in my math uh, teaching career, which is, I knew that, I knew that. Well, you know, a lot of students will make a mistake and they'll be like, oh man, I knew that, I was wrong, but but I knew that. Well, if you know that, then you have to actually show that when you're doing math. And so, you know, when it comes to basic math concepts, you gotta slow your mind down and think through it. All right, so basic math, Again, it's not so basic. You really have to you know, comprehend and understand the concepts. Okay, so multiplication or division, whatever we're going to see first from left to right, and then addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so I've pretty much taught you how to deal with positive and negative numbers in terms of adding and subtracting. And now that you understand the order of operations, well, you should be able to do this problem. Okay, so here is our PEMDAS phrase. And we're going to start with P, right? Because we're going to do this from left to uh, right. So do we have parentheses? Indeed, we do. Now, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, we have parentheses, brackets. You know, where do we start? Well, technically, you can just kind of go to each individual parentheses, okay? So uh, you can just focus in on this parenthesis, this parenthesis, and this parenthesis, and get the answer to each uh, individual little problem here, okay? And then, of course, uh, here, we're not going to uh, get rid of the brackets, so we're going to address this, this, and this, okay? So you don't have to do this parenthesis uh, first from left to right and then this uh, step next, you know, in separate steps. You can take one step and do all these individual parentheses because these parentheses are not inside of one another, okay? Now, these parentheses are inside of these brackets, but these are separate parentheses. So here, uh, when we look at our PEMDAS, we're going to start here, here, and here. All right, so again, I already taught you how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers. So uh, for those of you that uh, maybe got this wrong or maybe didn't know how to do this, let's see if you can get the right answers to 7 minus 9, 3 minus 5, and 8 minus 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of that right now. So again, we're thinking about PEMDAS. We're going to do this, this, and this. This is our first step. So what's the answers there? Well, 7 minus 9, I already showed you that's negative 2 because that's the same thing as 7 plus a negative 9, right? If I have $7 but I owe $9, well, I uh, still owe $2. Okay, how about 3 plus or 3 minus uh, 5? That's the same thing as 3 plus a negative 5. So same situation. I have $3 but I owe $5, so I still owe $2. So 7 minus 9 is negative 2. 3 minus 5 is negative 2 as well. And then 8 minus 9 is what? Well, it's the same thing as 8 plus negative 9. So if I have $8 but I owe $9, I still owe uh, $1. Okay, so that is our first step. Now, there's kind of three steps in one, but you want to, you know, write things nice and clear. And you don't want to take too many steps, you know, um, on one line when you're writing math. Math is a language. So you're kind of telling the story from the problem to the solution, right? So you're like, all right, once upon a time, there was a math problem. And then this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, this happened, and here is the end, right? So you don't want to make your story very boring. You'd be like, here is the problem, and here is the solution. And your math teacher might be like, yeah, but I don't really see the story you know, what are the steps, right? So remember, math is a language, so you need to write it nice, neat, and clearly. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and think about PEMDAS to take the next step. So let's go ahead and do that right now, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, um, I'm stopping this lovely video because there's two words in my math vocabulary or my <laughs> vocabulary in general, and uh, these two words are very important. Hopefully... Uh, you have these two words in your vocabulary, and that is help, and the second one is goal, right? So hopefully you have some goals, 
And if your goal is to improve in math or learn math, well, you're probably going to need some help. Now, my goal, uh, particularly with YouTube, is to reach as many people as possible. What I try to do is to teach math in a clear and understandable way, but that's my goal. But I can't achieve my goal without your help, okay? So uh, basically, the best way to help me out is to hit that subscribe button. It really goes a long way for YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. But uh, for those of you that are having a tough time in math, you know, your goal should be... <clears throat> Not like, oh, I just want to pass my class with a C and minus. Hey, Mr. Uh, YouTube Math Man, I don't really care about math. I just want to take this one class, pass it, and never see math again. Well, math is a skill, and you should try to develop as a lifelong skill. So your goal should be, you know, higher than what you think, okay? If those of you out there that are kind of like, I just want to you know, learn basic math, and that's it. You know, up your goal. Be like, I'm going to, do, you know, really learn this. I'm going to, you know... Uh, master this math, um, you know, that I'm taking uh, so I can keep it for the long run. So if you have a higher goal, okay, just mentally, you're going to have a better attitude. But if you need additional help beyond these little YouTube videos, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And for those of you that do want to review basic math, check out these two courses. Uh, again, you can find the links in the description. The first is my math foundations course, and the second is my math skills rebuilder course. Course. All right, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time to tell you uh, the reasons why I do what I do. And now let's go ahead and finish up this problem. Okay, so again, we're thinking about PEMDAS, right? So, you know, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and write this again PEMDAS. So, what do we have to do? Well, at this stage in the game, we have to kind of look at PEMDAS all over again. So, PEMDAS is a thing you kind of continually have to evaluate. So do I have any more parentheses? Well, I do have brackets, okay? So these are grouping symbols. So now I have to do what's inside of these sets of parentheses or these sets of brackets, which is this math right here, all right? So I gotta take care of this before I deal with the division. All right, so what's inside of these parentheses or brackets? Again, they're the same thing. So I have negative two times a negative two. Now this I didn't teach you, but the rules for multiplying uh, multiplying and dividing positive and ne negative numbers are super easy, okay? So here is how this works. So if the signs are the same, and again, this is the same rule for both multiplication and division, if you have a negative times a negative, it's positive. A positive times a positive is positive. So if the signs are the same, a negative and negative, or positive and a positive, your answer is positive. If the signs are different, the answer is negative. So like a negative two times a positive two is a negative four, right? And it's the same uh, rule for division. So here the signs are the same, negative and a negative, so our answer is going to be positive. Okay, so negative two times negative two is a positive four. So now we're done uh, with our parentheses or our brackets. So the only step left to do is to divide. All right, so we have a positive four divided by a negative one. So this is positive, this is negative, the signs are different, so our answer is going to be negative. And if it's kind of confusing to see the problem this way, 4 divided by negative 1, you can think of it as this uh, way as well, 4 divided as negative 1, like, um, or 4 divided by negative 1, like a fraction. So positive divided by negative is going to be negative, so 4 divided by 1 is obviously 4, but we have to be careful because this is going to be a negative 4. All right, so there we go. This is the answer to this simple math problem. And don't feel bad. My videos are not intended to make anyone feel bad. You know, uh, making mistakes, you know, uh, is part of learning math. Okay, I make mistakes. Matter of fact, I post occasional videos. I try not to. But every uh, once in a blue moon, I'll even make an error in my YouTube videos. Okay. And I've been doing this for decades. So, you know, we are human and we're going to make errors. And the trick is to develop really good math habits, you know, so you're double and triple checking yourself as you're going. But you got to be highly focused uh, when you are doing math. So if you're trying to, like, check your text messages and, you know, do the stuff at the same time, there's no such thing as multitasking when it comes to, you know, trying to solve a math problem. You're just going to really increase your probability of making a mistake. But hopefully you got something out of this video. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.